So let's get started. Hello, everyone. I'm Alex. I'm, I'm part of Flashbots, researcher at Flashbots. I want to talk about MEV, uh, its growth on Ethereum and other chains in 2021. I want to focus in particular on the chains mentioned here. So Ethereum, BSC, Avalanche, and Polygon. Um, the reason for that is purely because this is the chains uh, I was lucky to get data for. There are definitely other chains where MEV exists. Uh, and so this is not uh, to say that these chains in particular have a lot of MEV and others don't, but this is just the chains that we're going to look at for 2021. Um, and let me put a timer. All right, sweet. So first, before we kind of dive deep into it, and I'm sorry, this has been, you know, probably hammered on you a few times, but uh, it's definitely important to think about what's MEV, right? In particular, what's relevant to this presentation and what I want to address is uh, this debate that has been going on uh, a while back on uh, Twitter on uh, whether ARB is MEV, right? So there were a few, a few posts about it, a few tweets about it, uh, and people kind of debating on both sides whether ARBs are MEV or not. This is, this is crucial for the rest of the presentation. That's why I kind of want to talk about that. So, so really, what's, what's MEV, right? Um, MEV is maximal extractable value. This is what the three letters M and EV stand for. So an informal definition, so I'm looking for my mouse. Uh, an informal definition of that um, is the one that's stated below. MEV is the total value that can be extracted from the ordering, censorship, or insertion of transactions within a block being created. So this is kind of a little abstract. Um, and so, um, another way of looking at this is that MEV is quantifying an incentive. So the, the incentive we're, we're quantifying is the incentive for someone to influence the ordering, right? So when we're talking about extractable value, we're talking about the value that one can extract from influencing the ordering. And so what MEV represents, what, the val what this value really is, it represents the incentive that one has from influencing the ordering. So going back to whether arbitrage trades are MEV, um, well, you know, Looking at it from that lens, I believe, yes, they are. And I would make that claim for all the networks uh, that were mentioned at the beginning of this presentation. Um, so yes, I, I think they are they are MEV uh, because arbitrage trades are finite. Um, they're capacity constrained. And so when several people go after the same opportunity, there is um, value relative to the ordering that actually goes through for these trades. Whoever goes first actually makes the opportunity, assuming that they take it all. And so there is an incentive to influence the ordering. And so the, what we're trying to quantify with this is simply the incentive, the financial incentive that one would have to influence the order. All right, now that we've uh, fixed this, let's go back to our uh, MEV in 2021 on these chains. All right, let's look at some numbers. By the way, you're welcome to argue this definition. I'm, I'm happy to talk about this more, of course. Um, so in 2021, at least $500 million uh, worth of MEV was extracted on Ethereum, BSC, Avalanche, and Polygon, thanks to the great people who gave resources here below. And I'm going to talk about this more. So first, I'm, I'm going to address something where we do have a dashboard that we released a while ago called MEV Explorer. And in there, there's a bigger number than this. The reason for that is that uh, there are many misclassifications when we released uh, the, the dashboard and the code base behind it. And we've been working very hard, in particular, the, the team mentioned here, the data team and the team working on Maven Spec Pi has been working very hard at correcting those. So this is a much more accurate figure that encompasses um, correcting a lot of these misclassifications. So to add even more disclaimers to this $500 million number, this is incomplete. So it is very much a lower bound. That's why you have at least in front of it. So liquidations have not be counted in on all these networks and some time ranges uh, for some of these numbers here on, for example, Avalanche and BSC only partly for the whole year. So it, it is really a lower bound. Um, and the methodologies to quantify this are also slight, slightly different. I'm gonna talk about that a little more. Finally, it's not homogenous in the sense where um, 100 million worth of MEV extracted on one chain might represent something different than another chain in terms of who this incentive is for and why, and that's also important. All of that being said, this is still $500 million worth of value that has been extracted from these networks in 2021 and that people have made as real money. 
Um, so to, to kind of uh, hammer that point of the lower bound, we talked about extractable value a little bit earlier, right? And this is extracted value. So this is a good way to kind of see this. Extracted value is, is this concentric circle. Extractable value is all the value that could have been extracted. And the maximal extractable value is really this boundary here. That's really what this is. I mean, it's all inside as well, but it's all of this, right? And so where we are when we're talking about that in this presentation is really like this smaller circle, this lower bound of something that is bigger and that doesn't include everything, but it's still a representative amount. And that's why I wanted to bring it here. And so another way to state this term here, at least 500 million worth of MEV was extracted, is this. Um, so put another way, in 2021, uh, the incentive for someone to reorder, censor, or insert transactions in blocks produced on Ethereum, BSC, Avalanche, and Polygon was at least $500 million, um, which is cool to think about. And we're going to kind of get into why it's cool more. But first, let's get into a split. Uh, in particular, we're looking at a split not for the whole year, because again, there's some numbers that we don't have, but we're looking at a split from August 1st to December 1st, 2021. Um, so the split that we have here is the following. Um, we have BSC that about 14%, Polygon that's about 4.5%, Avalanche 7.7%, and Ethereum still the lion's share, 73.5% uh, 7, for these five months, right? But what's really striking here is that there is a non-trivial share of this uh, uh, pie chart or donut, donut chart um, that is not Ethereum. So although MEV has traditionally been thought as a concept that is very um, substantial on Ethereum, this clearly shows that MEV extraction is happening in other places as well. Um, and that's very interesting. And that's, that's, that's what I want to focus a little bit more on. Um, so let's dive into that more and let's dive into why, right? Like why uh, are these things here? Why have they been growing maybe as well? All right, so there are two main reasons I wanna talk about in this presentation. Um, the first one is the growth of decentralized finance, right? And I'm gonna use TVL, total value locked as a proxy for growth. Don't kill me for it. Uh, I know it's a flawed metric, and I know there's a lot of other things we, we can look at, exchange volumes, et cetera, but it is a convenient one, and I still think it's very representative. Again, open to arguing this point. So this is the TVL of Ethereum by uh, DeFi Llama, um, which is, stands at about 150 billion. And this is from uh, the great team uh, building MevInspect Pi, uh, Flashbots, the cumulative extracted MEV, not only 2021, there's before, but it goes up to about like 400 and something million. Uh, and it starts here at around about like 36 million. Um, and so this, this doesn't tell us much right now, but this is just um, the TVL of Ethereum and extracted MEV there. Now let's look at uh, Polygon. This is Polygon's TVL. It is in USD. We can look at it in Matic, but it looks very similar. Um, and so it's 5.17 billion. But what I want us to particularly pay attention to is the fact that really the TVL kind of started picking up May onwards, right? So now if you look at the, the extraction numbers on Polygon, in particular, we're looking at the numbers provided by Marlin, uh, not unsurprisingly, we can see that MEV extraction kind of started happening between May and June, right? So it, it, it's, it's, it's pretty obvious to look at these two things, but it does uh, give us a clue for why there would be more MEV extraction activity uh, somewhere else than Ethereum, right? Because there's TVL and, TVL implies financial activity. Financial activity implies the existence of inefficiencies and opportunities that are capacity, uh, uh, capacity constraints, sorry, finite, like arbitrages. Um, so now let's look at another chain that we talked about, right? Avalanche. Avalanche is 1089 billion. Again, the number matters a little bit less in this context. It is more about looking at where their TVL picked up. So here we can see, you know, mid to late August, their TVL picked up. What happened then? They launched their yield farming program, which I don't remember the name of, but that was August 18th, right? Now let's look at numbers given by the kind people at Parsec, in particular, Will, thank you, Will, uh, of quantifying atomic ARBs on Avalanche. Um, and we can see it's kind of dead in August. So the, the numbers, it starts here, starts at 1st of August, 2021. We can see how there isn't much happening. And then starting pretty much September or mid-August, this is where we are, this is 1st of August, things really picked up. So this, this 
really coincides with the yield farming program that was started on August 18th by Avalanche. And again, it coincides with a large increase in their total value loss. Again, uh, we can see a pattern there where there is more financial activity in other places. Uh, hand in hand with that comes MEV extraction activity. So again, doing a similar thing, looking at BSC, the, the TVL here is a little bit more skewed. So I did look at it at BN, in, in, in BNB directly. So you can see this, this in USD, it implies you know, a price rise of BNB, which we don't necessarily want uh, to look at. And so here we can see actually the TVL grew before, right? But really, it, most of its growth happened around May onwards, I would say, uh, looking at this. And so looking now at data from Eigenfi, who were very, very kind in providing this data, and um, I invite you to check them out. Again, this starts from the 1st of June because uh, they did not have data before that. But you can see basically uh, a lot of energy extraction from there. So this is less representative of the point I'm trying to make, but I think it's still very interesting data. So this is reason number one. Reason number one is the growth of the centralized finance on other chains inevitably means there exists inefficiencies in these places, which then in turn means that um, there is MEV to, um, to extract there. Now, the second reason is that the MEV game on Ethereum became harder to play. Um, and Luke is gonna give an awesome presentation after my presentation on this, so I won't go into any numbers because I, I will leave it to his presentation, but I'm, I'm gonna give some anecdotal evidence uh, that were provided by, by Robert. Thank you, Robert, uh, for providing those. Um, and so what do I mean by the MEV game is, is harder to play, right? What, what I mean is that uh, being a searcher, being an MEV searcher on Ethereum became more competitive. So these are, for example, extracts of, of tweets where uh, MEV searchers are talking about optimizing their code even more by writing an EVM assembly instead of writing in Solidity so that they can like optimize their gas efficiency more and so that they can win the auction um, by doing so. Um, and you can see, you know, again, this is anecdotal evidence. Luke is gonna have much more concrete data, but you can see how these dates kind of match up with the dates that we were looking at as well, right? And so um, another example of, for example, like, the MEV game becoming more competitive on Ethereum is pushing the limits of, of MEV extraction and having ARBs that are much longer, for example, which implies like you know, more sophisticated models and also more compute that is more like latency sensitive. Um, and another thing again by MEV Sensei, and again, July, around the time that we looked at these other chains, like gaining a lot of TVL and MEV extraction happening there more frequently. Um, this is another kind of optimization technique and things there that I believe Luke will talk about. So we have two reasons, right? The first one is really that uh, TVL grew in other places. And so obviously there are the existence of inefficiencies there. But the second thing is that uh, MEV extraction on Ethereum became so competitive that um, a lot of searchers prefer to go to greener pastures, right? And they migrated from Ethereum or Ethereum only to other places where they still have an edge and where they don't need to compete with people that optimize their software a lot. That I think is a very interesting movement um, of developers and of traders, right? And so what do I want you to take away from this very short presentation? A few things. Um, the first one is that 2021 is the year MEV extraction on Ethereum not only grew, uh, clearly there was a lot of MEV extraction and Ethereum is still like 73% of it for the year, uh, or at least for the last five months of 2021, but also became competitive. And that I think is, is a very interesting fact to, to reason about. And because of this fact, right, and combined with the DeFi growth on other places, this has led searchers, MEV searchers to much greener pastures. Um, and so why this is interesting, in my opinion at least, is because we can now compare the activity, the MEV activity and the negative externalities that might come from it on these different networks. And so instead of purely looking at MEV extraction on Ethereum only, we can now look at it on Polygon on BSC, on Avalanche, and on other chains that weren't mentioned in this presentation, like Solana, like Terra, that have you know, 10 or 15 billion TVL as well, and surely have inefficiencies in their systems as well. And so this is what the next presentations are gonna be uh, about as well. They're going to, um, so I'm, 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 I don't necessarily wanna give away the topics of these presentations, but it, it, this is why I think this is interesting. The second thing that I think why it's interesting is, I think it makes designing protocols with MEV or adversarial behavior assumptions in mind um, a lot more relevant than it once was. So 
um, a lot of assumptions that a protocol designer would make in the past, uh, where it would be more like tail end cases, now would happen much more frequently because I think it is more likely to assume the presence of MEV searchers that are economically rational actors trying to influence the ordering on these networks. Um, so this was like a very, very quick overview of MEV on some chains in 2021. And the message that I really want to um, communicate is the one that I, I kind of just described in this takeaway, right? And, um, and the other presentations will kind of continue building on that message. But so what, what's next for 2022? Well, clearly, if you all believe in the message put forward so far is that MEV extraction is probably coming to a chain near you. Um, and that uh, this movement and this movement of searchers actually going to other chains is probably not gonna stop. Um, and so we should think about the implications of that. All right, I think I'm, says 15 minutes here. I'm within time, kind of. So thank you for listening. I hope um, they gave you some food for thought. I am happy to talk about any of this more. So please talk about this on the Flashballs Discord and maybe your research channel. Otherwise, please email me or uh, DM me on Twitter. I also want to shout out to all these people that provided data on short notice. So most of the data here was provided by, by others. Uh, so Parsec and Will at Parsec, Eigenfi, Marlin Protocol, who uh, took the code at MevInSpecPy and forked it to run it on Polygon and made some changes to it. Uh, and the awesome MevInSpec, MevInSpecPy team. Um, Luke, who is part of that team speaking in the next conversation, in the next presentation. Um, all right, that's it. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll leave it now to Luke. Luke, if you want to share your screen, we should be able to do that. Um, okay, one second. Let's see, it's going to